Hey everyone, so today I wanted to go ahead and uh, run a quick tutorial on how to install PrestaShop. So if you haven't already, go ahead and log into your hosting provider control panel. Uh, my hosting provider is using ISPconfig as a control panel. Some of you may be using cPanel. Um, so go ahead and go into your websites. Uh, so we're going to create a new website. We're going to call this mystore.techreanimate.com. Alright, so once you've uh, set your domain name here, uh, remember that because we're going to need that later on. Um, so save the site. Um, after that, we're going to need an FTP account. So let's go ahead and create an FTP account. I'm going to generate a random password here. I'm going to call it test. So once I've created that, uh, so you can see our username is c7test. Um, so this may take some time to actually create, depending on your hosting provider, uh, usually about a minute. Um, so what we're also going to need, besides a FTP account, is a database username and password. So let's go ahead and create a database username. Um, so for the database username, uh, for testing purposes, I'm just going to use the same password I use for my FTP. Um, I honestly do not recommend that. I recommend you make this a separate password. Um, and you store it somewhere safe. Um, so the database name is going to be test123, uh, same password as FTP. Um, you can see it created it a C7 test123. Um, so we're going to create a new database. Also, let's call this test123. Uh, select the username for it and the website for it. So my store. Everything's all set. Um, you don't really need remote access unless your hosting provider uses a different database server as the web server. So let's hit save. Um, so that should take a second to create, uh, usually about a minute. If the server's in sync with your computer, most of the time uh, you just have to wait till the till the clock hits the next minute. The next minute. Um, so let's go ahead while that's doing that. Uh, open up FileZilla. Um, and you can use WinSCP, but I recommend FileZilla. Um, so once you have FileZilla opened up, um, go ahead and type in your host name, uh, username, which was C7Test, uh, the password, and you can go ahead and connect. Um, so you guys might have different folder layout than I do. Um, for my folder layout, uh, everything will be inside the web folder. Some of you may have a HTML folder or a public folder. So we're going to go ahead and let's go inside the web folder. Um, all this default stuff we don't need, so we can just go ahead and get rid of it. Um, so let's see if this is actually updated. So that alert went away, so that's all set. Um, so now all we need is to download Press the Shop. So once you go up uh, to press the shop, you'll see a download button here. Um, do it yourself. You don't need to fill this out. That's just their way of tricking you into getting your information. So go ahead and hit download. Um, now it's downloading. So now that's now that that's done downloading, uh, you can see here on my desktop. Go ahead and extract it. close this out and there it is so now we can just go ahead and go to the folder that we extracted and go ahead and just copy it over um, so this should copy over fairly quick um, although there are a large amount of files so depending on how fast your internet connection that may vary so now that that's done uploading uh, let's go ahead and go to our browser and Remember that domain I told you to remember? Um, so we're going to go ahead and type that in. Um, once you type that in, uh, you'll see an installation screen. Um, go ahead and hit Next. Uh, I agree to these terms and conditions. Uh, shop name, testing websites, uh, main activity. Um, so you can select your main activity. Um, the sample content is going to be the same. That doesn't change that. Um, Luis Rodriguez. Uh, my email. Test 
testing at test.com password. I'm going to use the same password I used for. Oh man, I think I forgot that password actually. Well, let's just make a new one. Um, I'm going to have to reset the password over here because I seem to have forgotten it. Well, that's being reset. Um, so put that password in there. Uh, the username was c7test123. Uh, same for the database name. Uh, you can leave that default unless your hosting provider has something different. Um, you can also leave that default. Uh, so once you've gone ahead and uh, hit test data, your database connection now, you should see database is connected. Um, go ahead and hit next. Um, so you'll see it's going to start creating all your default settings. And give that a moment to run. Alright, so now the installation has finished. Um, for security purposes, you must delete your install folder. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to FileZilla again. Um, you'll see this install folder right here. Um, before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and rename this admin folder. So it's also going to automatically rename it for you. Um, but I recommend renaming it yourself so that it's something you can remember. I'm going to call this Super Panel. Um, so I've renamed that over to Super Panel and I can start deleting this install folder. So once that that's done uh, being deleted. Um, we're going to want to go over, we can go over here to front office. You can see the website. Um, it's filled with a bunch of clothing items for women. Um, we're going to want to change all of that, but that's for a later video. Um, and just to make sure, let's go ahead and see. So we want to go to back office. Um, this is still not done deleting though. So now that that has finished deleting, we can go ahead and we can go to back office. Um, you can see it says error because we renamed that. So back office, super panel. And now it's going to ask us to log in. So let's go ahead and log in with that username and password created, which is testing at test.com and our password. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, you can go ahead and disable dev mode so you can have real numbers in here. Um, I also recommend getting rid of a lot of the defaults here. So there are default customers um, and there's also some default orders. You can't exactly delete the default orders but what you can do is you can select them all and um, you can change the order status to cancelled. so that it doesn't either confuse you or get processed somehow by some default account login.